Hey everyone, welcome to today's DeFi video, uh, DeFi weekly video, explaining what Wi-Fi is. Uh, you've heard about all the hype, and I'm sure you're still confused as to what all this madness is still about, uh, apart from number go up. So the hope of this video is that uh, I actually break it down to you so you can better understand how all this magic DeFi money works um, and how you can actually like join in fun as well. So I'm going to start off with what are Y tokens, then leading into how YFI works, and finally the risks associated with YFI. So for context, uh, about four months ago, this one guy called uh, Andre Cronier, apparently, is how you say his name, uh, created what's known as uh, Y tokens. All right, so the idea is really simple. You get your, uh, sorry, one sec. You get your USDT or like a USDC or DAI, basically any stable coin, and you deposit it to um, Y Earn Finance, right? So imagine Y Earn Finance, there's this box inside here, and you deposit any one of these coins. And what you get on the way out, or what the protocol returns you, is YUSDT, or YUSDC if you deposit USDC, or YDI if you deposited uh, Y, if you deposited DAI. And what these Y tokens are are essentially uh, yield optimized tokens, and. What that means is that suppose we've got a few lending protocols, one being Compound, another one called Aave, and then some other random one. What uh, Wiren actually does is it will get your USDC and actually move it to the highest yield APR available, right? So if the amount of APR in Compound is 10%, it will move it there. But if Aave is higher at 12%, it will move all the USDC there. So you'd almost think of it as uh, like an algorithm uh, or a money bot that invests your uh, US dollars and optimizes it for yield, all right? So that's like the core kind of innovation which was created about four months ago. Now, that's only just the start, and <laughs> you're gonna have to wrap your head around this because it's pretty big brain stuff. So we had our USDC, which became YUSDC after we deposited it inside YEARN. Now, this is where the next kind of, uh, I would say, component in our little world comes in. And Curve Finance, so I covered it in one of my previous videos, has uh, created this thing called a Y pool, right? Which gives you YCRV tokens. So the way a Curve Y pool works is that it lets you swap between multiple Y tokens with low slippage. So, uh, quick context Curve Finance is a stablecoin AMM which lets you go between say USDC and USDT with very low slippage, as in you will lose less than like 0.1% per transaction when you swap between these two US uh, dollar uh, stable coins. So the Y curve Y pool is kind of like a regular stable coin pool, except it's for Y tokens. So that means you can swap between Y USDC and Y USDT very easily, right? That's what you do if you go to um, the Curve Y pool. But as a liquidity provider, what you can actually do is you can get your YUSDC and give it to the Curve Y pool, which in turn gives you Y Curve tokens. Oh, whoops. And these Y Curve tokens represent a basket of many tokens at once. It's kind of like an index of, yeah, Y tokens. And uh, the whole idea around it is that you're now like an LP, meaning every time someone swaps between these, you earn additional fees. I, I don't know what that is, but that's curve fees. And because Curve has a liquidity mining scheme going on, 
you actually earn Y curve token. You actually earn uh, curve tokens when you deposit this. So like taking a step back, you start it off with literally like a simple US dollar that does nothing. Uh, this is like almost like a pet rock. And then this is a smart rock, right? Which is trying to figure out where it can be the most useful. And then this is kind of like an index of smart <laughs> rocks. Now, where it gets really kind of insane is the fact that with Compound and all of these other protocols launching liquidity mining schemes, um, there's a bunch of, uh, you have to remember that uh, rewards or liquidity mining rewards go to the contract which holds the money. So all of the rewards which were meant to go to say CUSDT holders went to the YUSD contract, which is owned by the Y curve contract, and they're essentially stuck here. So Andre created uh, what was known as Hawaii Phi token, which lets you claim directly from this Y curve pool. So if you stake your Y curve tokens inside the uh, Wi Fi governance panel, you in turn will get Wi Fi tokens. That's kind of where the birth of Wi Fi comes in. Because uh, if you think about it, you're, uh, you're staking Y curve tokens, which are A, uh, hold on, let me do this here. Y curve is earning interest. It's you're an LP in curve, which gives you uh, additional fees, right? And then uh, on top of that, you now stake it to earn dollar YFI tokens, right? And the crazy thing is that the the more Y curve that gets staked, right? So. Uh, the more money that's locked up, the more interest that gets generated, but also the amount of uh, assets under management increases. And because the assets under management increase, uh, or you're earning, sorry, uh, what I meant to say is that if you deposit Y curve tokens, right, you're in turn getting YFI tokens. And as you deposit more Y curve tokens, the assets under management and the pot of interest also goes up, which therefore makes Y Fi more valuable, which therefore gives you higher yield on depositing your Y curve. And like I think as of right now, it started off at about two thousand percent, and as of now, it's about five hundred percent APR. So. When you run the numbers, it's uh, per week. It's actually pretty decent uh, how much you can earn. Now, the really, really wild thing about this whole story is that you cannot, number one, or you couldn't buy YFI directly on launch. The, there were no investors. And Andre, the founder, uh, actually didn't end up holding any. He uh, just mined a few right at the start alongside everyone else. And because of this, uh, it created a very fair launch where essentially everyone runs the protocol, right? So the only way you can get Wi-Fi is by depositing money. And it's, it's like created this very unique paradigm where the users of the protocol fully own it. And the governance in terms of like who can make changes and all of that is fully determined by Wi-Fi holders. Of course, you can buy Wi-Fi now by the people who've earned it and are now willing to sell it. But it just shows that there's no investors who got like, say, 10x cheaper prices um, and are able to sell, to, sell onto everyone. So that's, I think, like the really amazing thing about Y curve and the attention it's kind of like brought is that you've kind of got like a community governed protocol. And like, if we just recap all of the steps once again, right, you have your USDT, 
which becomes yusdt when you deposit into iEARN, which then becomes y curve when you deposit it into curve which then earns you yfi when you deposit it to the yfi governance right and it's like a derivative of a derivative of a derivative and that being said with all of this madness there is a lot of risk uh, as you can see right because if something goes wrong here that like in terms of the yield optimization then everything above it collapses. If something goes wrong in curve, then everything else collapses. If there's a bug with the Wi-Fi governance or uh, anything along those lines, uh, this whole thing collapses and the price of Wi-Fi goes down and uh, the assets under management could be at risk. So there's inherently a lot of risk, um, especially because these Wi-Fi contracts uh, don't actually have audits as of lately. So. If I was to summarize it, this is a very high risk uh, to return operation, right? Because, uh, yeah, it's just all this stuff is like, I think four days old right now. Um, but the really exciting thing is that if you deposit your money into Wi-Fi and earn Wi-Fi, you are now a stewardess of, or steward of the protocol itself, and you can govern the, uh, the direction of it. So like ever since, um, Andre's release this, there has been so much activity in making sure that the contracts are safe and uh, any things which should give too much power to Andre have been revoked and given over to the community. And it's like something we've never actually seen. In fact, uh, people describe it as the, or I <laughs> describe it as um, DeFi's almost Bitcoin in a way. All right. And uh, I think. That's what makes us like really special. So to summarize, it's like, okay, so then you might be thinking, so should I deposit my money? And it's, uh, I guess it's up to you about whether, uh, how much risk you're willing to take. But on the flip side, the return is very high because for context right now, Y curve, when I checked yesterday, hit about $300 million locked up. So the amount of interest generated on that is very high. Uh, but also it's got such a loyal community um, that it's kind of like what does a protocol look like which is governed by the people not by VCs and not by like a core team exclusively so yeah hopefully that kind of summarizes what is Wi-Fi how it works and the risks associated with it um, if you have any questions definitely just drop me a message in the comments below. Uh, and I also wrote this piece on why I think Wi-Fi is a really interesting investment opportunity on my uh, newsletter. So do check that out if um, you're more curious about that. Once again, do your own research. This is an investment advice, uh, but it's educational <laughs> content. Um, but yeah, no, uh, thanks for tuning in. And I really hope that this helped uh, all of you out there in understanding this crazy, bizarre world. See ya.